Way back when we first started this chapter, we talked about how to prove two triangles congruent, right? That was kind of what we were talking about. After we talked about what triangles were and all the different theorems for them, we got into congruent triangles. To prove two triangles congruent, the process we went through was to show all six different parts congruent, and it was a mission, right? Three angles, three sides, lots of givens, strange theorems like the third angle theorem, Okay, just kind of almost more frustrating than actually like a good proof. It was just like, oh my gosh, are we done yet? No, what do we still have left to show? Well, fortunately, there's an easier way. Actually, there's five easier ways. Okay? And in those five easier ways, each one only requires three different pairs of congruent things. Right? So you only have to show three things congruent to be done, as long as you show the right three things. There are five ways for proving two triangles congruent. They are SSS, side, 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 show three sides congruent. SAS, side, angle, side, show two sides and the included angle. ASA, angle, side, angle, to show two angles congruent as, long as, as well as mm, their included side. Angle, angle, side, two angles and the non-included side. And then the last one. HL stands for hypotenuse leg, and now hypotenuse is the right triangle. So you have to show right triangle, hypotenuse congruent, leg congruent. Doesn't matter which leg, as long as you get one. Okay? With these five things, it makes it a little bit easier for us. So we're going to go through and practice proofs for each one of these. You'll have lots of opportunities to ask questions. Okay? As you're working through those proofs, there are some things you should keep in mind, some words you should be watching for, some helpful ways. To prove sides congruent or prove angles congruent. With the word or with proving sides congruent, one thing you want to watch out for is the word bisect. If a side is bisected, okay, if a side has been bisected, has been cut into two congruent halves. So with those two congruent halves, there's that word congruent. That's what we want. Okay? Same thing with midpoint. Yeah, midpoint's the point in the middle, but the whole idea with it being in the middle is that it cuts it into two congruent halves. That's good stuff. You want congruent. Okay? Those two are very similar, bisect and midpoint. Have a lot of common pieces. Um, so when you see one, if you want to, think of it. You can kind of think of them together. If you can't remember one, try and put them together in your brain. You mean the same thing, then divide it in half. The other one's a little bit different, but reflexive. The reflexive property, and you will use this if you have a side that is in both triangles. Maybe they overlap. Maybe they're adjacent. Okay? But whatever you want, you want it to be in both triangles. And in that case, it's a freebie. Oh, yeah, they line up perfectly. If it's in both, it better be the same for both. It better be congruent for both. Sides, not a ton of ideas to help you, but we a lot of times are given the information about the side. It's the angles that we have to figure out. The reason that is is we've spent more of this year talking about angles. Chapter 3 was all about angles. Okay. We'll use the sides more when we talk about other shapes and whatnot, but angles are kind of our focus for some reason. Okay. For angles, we can bisect angles just like we can bisect a side. We can bisect angles and cut them in half. They will be cut in half by another side or a ray or a line. When they do that, those new two angles are congruent. Perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines make right angles. All right angles are congruent. If you have perpendicular segments or perpendicular lines, look at the angles. Can you use them? Because if you can, right angles are always congruent. Which means... Anytime you see right angles. A little helpful hint for you right there. Right angles are always congruent. If it says right angle, boom, you're done. That'll be especially important when you do HL because HL only works for right triangles. Okay. Reflexive. We want to be able to talk about angles that are in the same triangle or in both triangles. If the same angle is in both triangles, We can use it as reflexive. We 
medium and angle in both triangles, obviously it'll be the same in both, and that's where that word reflexive comes in. Okay? Always be looking for reflexive. Sometimes that's the piece you're missing. It's hard to see when it overlaps, but see if you can make it work. Uh, vertical angles. Vertical angles are always cool, right? You knew that. Anytime you have vertical angles, mark them. They might not necessarily be in your given. Like a lot of times we list stuff in the given and then we use it. Vertical angles, and actually, you know, the same with reflexive too, it's probably not in the given spelled out. It's something you have to get from the picture. Why do we like to rely so heavily on the picture? Okay. The last one, and probably the most recent one, the one we've talked about most recently, are parallel lines. When two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, there's some angles we care about. We care about the corresponding angles. They're congruent. Alternate interior angles could be congruent. And it's kind of rare for our purposes, but alternate exterior are also congruent. Notice we don't talk about same side interior because they are supplementary. We don't care about supplementary triangles. It doesn't even make sense. But these angles that are congruent definitely help us. So lots of different ways you can use and help yourself through the process. When you see bisect, what does that mean? Oh yeah. When you see perpendicular lines, what does that tell you? When you're stuck, is there a reflexive or vertical angle that can help you out? Okay. So read carefully through the givens. Whenever you see a given, draw as much information, come up with as many conclusions as you can from it. These are ways that will help you as you work to go. We're going to go through all five ways to do an example group, talk through all the different details that go into making it up. I think that will really help you out. Okay, so you have your blue packet, jot as many notes, maybe write down some of this stuff, and then we can get started on the rest of the groups.